thank you for joining us this morning for worship. Uh, this is the Lakeshore Assembly of God, uh, Sunday morning service, uh, Chris Porostowski and my wonderful wife, Rachel. Um, we would like to share a new song that God has put on our hearts recently called He Is Still Enough. And it basically just talks about um, kind of how we have that Elijah moment where, um, you know, we might get over a great victory with God and then all of a sudden we get scared because something's going on in the country or something um, is happening in our lives or someone's sick or some we lost something. Um, but the truth is uh, we don't need to fear. Um, God is with us and he is going to make everything okay and he's going to bring all things together for his glory. Um, so we just want to share this with you guys. Sing along or hum along um, and just kind of worship in your hearts. That'd be great. Why am I still weak? Why do I still think you're not coming through? that we really realize in our hearts that you're still enough no matter what happens during these times, Lord God. We praise you and we thank you for being who you are, faithful and true. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to Lakeshore Assembly of God. Um, it's January 24th. 
I hope you just enjoyed that song um, that I had my son do this morning, um, him and his wife, Rachel. Chris wrote that song, and when I heard the words, I asked him to sing it because it related to the sermon that I have for you this morning. Anyway, with uh, everything that we're facing right now, I had to sit down and write myself a sermon. <laughs> Sometimes that does help. Um, we see in the Bible that one time when David was going through a difficult time, his own men turned on him and wanted to take his life. And David said in 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, it said, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. So that's what I'm trying to do. Sometimes when we get discouraged or are going through a stormy time, we need to encourage ourselves in the Lord. So this is what encouraged my heart, and I hope your heart will be encouraged as well with this word. So let's pray. Lord, we are facing difficult times right now in our nation, in our churches, and in our lives. Lord, we pray that you will help me bring this word forth today, Lord, and encourage the hearts of those that hear it. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so the title of this sermon is Fear Not, for I am with you. Um, how many of you guys have any kinds of emergency kits at home? There's all kinds of different kinds of emergency kits. We have first aid kits, you know, in case you get hurt. Um, we have other kind of kits, like uh, an emergency kit to have in your car in case you get a flat tire, or you know that may include a, fl a flare or fix a flat or um, anything like that. There's other kind of uh, kits you might have for a power outage at home or a disaster kit, which would include candles or a flashlight, blankets in case your heat goes off extra non-perishable food and water. There's all kinds of things out there. The fact is, we never know from day to day what we may face, and it's good to be prepared because most emergencies don't come with plenty of warning. They just happen. And it's on days like those that you're really glad that you made some types of preparation ahead of time so that you can have some resources to draw from. And it's one thing to face physical emergencies um, and be prepared, but how well are you prepared spiritually for when the storms of life come upon you? We have to be prepared both physically and spiritually when we're facing trials or storms. 2020 was a difficult year and a year of many trials and testing for our country, that we have not seen in a long, long time. And so far, 2021 isn't any better. We've had uh, a lot of people not feeling well in our own congregation um, facing COVID, and it's been rough. And you never know what you're going to face. But we need to get prepared for any other storms that may be coming our way because the near future is in question. But we don't need to fear, and we need to know that the Lord is with us. Um, like one of those emergency kits, we need to have God's word fresh at our fingertips and stored in our hearts and our minds so we can have a place of refuge to run to in stormy times. We have to practice 1 Peter 5.7, which says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. We need to remind ourselves in troubled times um, of different scriptures that would encourage us. I like to put um, scriptures on my refrigerator because I will see it. So maybe you can do the same. If you have a verse that speaks to your heart or brings encouragement, put it out where you can see it. There is a shifting going on in our country and in our world, and there's a blatant rejection of respect for God and his word and the truths that are taught in the Bible, even though America was built upon many godly principles. We see today that there's a very strong spirit of antichrist that has been rising, and uh, which brings a spirit of confusion and deception is all around you. 
This really shouldn't take us by surprise because if you read your Bible, that's what it says is going to happen before Christ returns to earth for his faithful who serve him, his bride. My question to you is, where does that leave you? What side of the line will you be standing on when persecution or a great physical or spiritual battle comes to your doorstep? These are questions that I'm asking myself, too. It's clear that the things that the world presents as truth is in blatant opposition to the word of God, like abortion, which has now claimed over 42 million lives, according to ACLJ, all of the um, transgender and homosexual agenda, the globalism, which is overtaking many parts of the world, communism, <laughs> these are things that are just blatantly and against God's word, um, also the worship of many gods. All this and more are presented by the world as things that should be accepted and embraced by all people. I mean, just turn on your TV. Any, anything that's presented there is blatantly in your face, um, many got ungodly things. The line in the sand is clearly being drawn, and Satan is a deceiver. He brings confusion and chaos and lies, and we see it in our world today. We have to clearly know the truths that are in God's word and hold on to them during this time, or we will be swept away and deceived in these last days. We have to get serious. It's time for you to be sure of the things you really believe in, and it's time for you to check your foundation, things that you've built your life upon. What's it really made of? Will you stand or will you fall when the winds of the world blow strongly against your Christian faith? It's just like this umbrella. Um, it can protect you in a rainstorm. It can keep your head dry. And likewise, if you focus your attention on God and his word, he can give our minds peace during a storm, even when things are raging around us. Isaiah 26.3 says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. We have to keep on studying and meditating and reading uh, God's word and keep in communion with him. If we don't, it's like laying this umbrella aside. And the rain and the world will just bombard you with all kinds of negativity and lies and evil thing that can bring harm and deception to your mind and your body and your spirit. The enemy wants you to compromise God's truths in his word. But we have to keep those umbrellas up, church. We have to know the word and live out what it practices because we want to arrive safely in heaven with Jesus someday. On a stormy day, even if you have an umbrella, even if I have an umbrella in a, in a storm, rainstorm, I could still get wet. My legs can get wet, especially if the wind is blowing in the rain. Same thing in your Christian walk. When storms and trials arrive in your life, it can and it does affect you. We can get depressed. We can feel lost. We can feel afraid at times. But that's when we need to draw closer to the Lord. We need to shift our focus back on him and not on the storm around us. He has a purpose for the storms he allows us to go through, too. He wants to strengthen us if we abide in him. I love Psalm 91. Uh, I have it on my refrigerator. I did commit it to memory, and I often try to remind myself of that psalm. But for today, I just want to look at the first two verses. It says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. For I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Psalm 32, 6 and 7 say, You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. When the storms of life affect you, we need to hide in Christ, 
Know that he covers you, just like this umbrella. Sing praise songs to him. He will protect your mind and shelter you. But just like an umbrella in a storm, you have to hold on tight to it. I remember being out in the, in a, the rainstorm, and the wind is so heavy, sometimes it just wants to pull it out of your hand. <laughs> have you ever experienced that? <laughs> yes. Uh, the wind has a way of trying to take it right out of your hand so you have no protection. And there is a struggle spiritually. We are in a spiritual war, and the enemy does not want you to become victorious. He wants you defeated in your faith to render you useless for God. But God promises to be with us no matter what we face. He promises to give us strength in our trials. I love Isaiah 41, verse 10. It says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 2 Corinthians 4.17 says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. I'm not saying what, we're, what you might be facing today is light and unimportant, but compared to the glory that we will face someday with Jesus in heaven, we'll look back on those days as light and momentary troubles. I know it's always hard when we're going through a storm and you're right in the middle of it because we fix our eyes on all the circumstances around us. But we have to know the Lord is with us and he will be your strength. Isaiah 43, verse 2 and 5a say, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flame will not set you ablaze. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I've had to quote that to myself many times. And you know what? When you start to be afraid, remind yourself of that. Don't be afraid. He is with us. Our comfort comes from knowing God is with us. And as I've said before, when I taught before on fear, there's over 365 verses in the Bible that tell us to fear not. And you know it's always easier said than done when you're facing a storm. But know he is with you. In the middle of a serious storm, our senses can get so overwhelmed uh, with what we're seeing and hearing and experiencing, but we must remind ourselves, I must remind myself, that the Lord is with us, and he knows what's going on, nothing's taking him by surprise, and he will give us strength to get through it. Let's look at the account of, um, let's look at the account of Mark chapter 4, when Jesus was in the boat or with the disciples on a stormy night. Mark 4, 35 through 41 says, That day when evening came, he, meaning Jesus, said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the winds, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified, and they asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The disciples believed they were about to drown in this furious squall. And we live right here by Lake Erie, um, one of the, shall the shallowest of the Great Lakes. And we all have heard many, many stories about how storms can brew up very quickly on the lake and many dangerous 
people are you it's very dangerous to be in a boat um, when this happens even if you're an experienced boater many people have lost their lives waves were breaking over the boat and filling the boat that Jesus was in with the disciples and the boat was beginning to sink how could Jesus sleep I mean didn't he care was he that was he unaware of what they were going through when you think about it I mean how tired could he be in the middle of all this storm all these thoughts must have been going on in their head as they were trying to manage the boat in their own strength before they woke up Jesus. Have you ever felt like the disciples when you're facing a trial or a storm or a sickness maybe in your life? It's like, well, where's God in all this? Doesn't he know what I'm going through? Why doesn't he do something? Sometimes these things are difficult to understand. If you read just before Mark chapter 4, we see in chapter 3, Jesus just completed a very busy day. He must have been physically exhausted from all the ministry that he did. He was healing people, teaching and preaching all day long before they got in the boat. He was tired. We have to remember, Jesus is 100% God, but he's also 100% man. Remember, he came and took on flesh like one of us. He chose to experience life as we do in the flesh. He knows what it's like to be hungry and thirsty and exhausted. He understands the frailty of our bodies when we are weak or overexert ourselves. And this was his situation on that night. He was so exhausted that he fell into a very deep sleep. But he still trusted his heavenly father, and he had peace. When the disciples finally woke Jesus up, they questioned his care, their, his care for them. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? How did he respond? He said to them, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? He was right there with them in the boat. Before he left, or before they all left, he said, let us go over to the other side. He didn't leave them in the middle. He was going with them through the storm. And he won't leave us in the middle of our storm either. He's right there with us. We must believe that and comfort yourself with that fact. But the disciples were trying to manage their boat in their own strength, doing what they could about the situation until they finally turned to Jesus for help. <laughs> and when they did turn to him for help and woke him up, they even had an attitude about it. Don't you even care what's going on here? Our first reaction in a stormy situation should be to call on the Lord right away. Let's invite him to be with us and help us right away before trying to manage things ourselves and getting mad at God because we're going through a rough time. We live in a fallen world, and when Adam and Eve sinned, it opened up the way for sin and death to invade mankind and all kinds of evil. We see the results of sin all around us and experience tragedies that we don't understand. Some are caused by our own bad choices. Some are caused by evil choices made by others, which affect us. Um, other things just happen. It's a fallen world. Whatever we experience, let's hold on to the fact that Jesus is right here with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Romans 8, 35, 37, and 39, we see Paul writes this. He says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor the future, remember that, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You need to hang on to the fact that the Lord is with us. He knows what you're going through and he cares deeply for you. 
we need to have faith. Nothing can separate you from his love or presence if you are his child. As I said before, put scriptures around you. Listen to things that encourage you. Turn off the things that are so negative and bring you down all the time. Dwell on the Lord. Put your eyes on him, not on the storm. Romans 8.28, the famous one we should all know, <laughs> it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. Do you know that song by Casting Crowns? I love the one they sing, um, Just Be Held. There's some words in that song that are so good, but I love the part where, the, where he says, if your eyes are on the storm, you wonder if I love you still. If your eyes are on the cross, you know I always have and I always will. That is so true. We have to keep our eyes on the cross. He loves you and he is with you no matter what the circumstances may be. We see another uh, account in Matthew chapter 14 when the disciples were out on a stormy uh, lake once again at night. They were out um, and Jesus was praying and Jesus decided to walk across the water to come to the boat. And the disciples looked out there, and they thought it was a ghost coming toward them, walking on the water. And Jesus said, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Peter was so amazed that he asked Jesus, he said, if that's really you, Lord, tell me to come out of the boat and walk on the water. Jesus said, come. And amazingly, Peter got out of the boat and began walking on the water, but then the word says that when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, and he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him and said, You of little faith, why did you doubt? Where's our faith meter? I'm speaking to myself, too. Sometimes, you know, when we are in a storm, we see everything around us. Just like Peter saw the effects of the wind, and everything, and he got his eyes off of the Lord, and he started to sink. The same thing with us. We can't dwell at the storm all the time. You will, you'll go down. Keep your focus on, on the Lord. Getting back to our main story in Mark chapter 4, we see that after they woke Jesus up, they were shocked to see what he did. I don't think they were really expecting him to stop the storm. Jesus got up and said, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and the waves became calm. They woke him up, but I doubt they were expecting a miracle. Maybe they wanted to wake Jesus up so that he could help them bail water out of the boat. Or maybe grab an oar and start rowing away from the storm. But that he did something they didn't expect. He got up and he quieted the winds and the waves. They experienced something I doubt they thought was going to happen. Verse 41 says, they were terrified and they asked each other, who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. So let's make this personal. When you call out to God in prayer in the middle of stormy times, what are we really expecting? Often, in times like these, we all have little or no faith, just like the disciples. We're no different. I admit, I'm guilty of this sometimes, too. Jesus rebuked them for having no faith. We need to have more faith and learn to trust God in situations that we have no control of. I don't know what the rest of 2021 is going to hold. Neither do you, regardless of what people say. We have to trust God. He's, he is immovable. He has a plan, and we, he will be with us. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. So if you need more faith, you need more word. We need to read our Bibles, as Bob Green always says. <laughs> Block out all that negative influences around you and keep your love for God alive. Don't let it die out by dwelling on the storm. It takes a deliberate choice and a decision to build up your relationship with God. It just doesn't happen. It's like this. 
If you never ever put any money in your bank account, ever, and you decided one day you really need some money, I'm going to go to the bank and get some money out, well, guess what? If you never put it in, you're never going to be able to take it out. There's going to be nothing to draw from. Same thing spiritually. We have to make a deliberate choice to build ourselves up and encourage ourselves in the word of God so that you will be able to have faith when we face some of these storms that hit us. And we want to be ready to stand, not fall. We need to replace doubt with faith and put on the armor of God. The famous armor of God scriptures, Ephesians 6, 10 through 17 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the armor of God, so when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, and the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. There's so much in those scriptures. That's a whole nother sermon for a whole nother time. But the gist of it is we need to put on these pieces of armor. God just isn't going to do it for you. This is what you have to do in order to stand. It takes effort on your part and choices of your own will to deepen your relationship with God. Invest in your relationship with him so that you will be strong. Another example would be like if you're married, you might have a marriage certificate showing you're married to someone, but that doesn't show the condition of the relationship. A piece piece of paper doesn't mean anything. If you stop talking with each other or stop loving each other, you will drift apart. And many people are like two strangers living in the same house, but they never really know each other's hearts. God doesn't want that kind of relationship with you either. You are the bride of Christ. He wants to be in relationship with you, and it takes effort. So prepare yourself so you can stand in the storm. Don't just assume God is with you if you really do not have a relationship with him. We read in 1 Samuel chapter 4 of a time when the children of Israel um, were going out to defeat the Philistines in battle. And they were carrying around the Ark of the Covenant, and um, that's where the presence of God rested But at this time, the whole nation, including the priest, were sinning so deeply. They were sinning, and their hearts were very far from God. We read in those scriptures, Eli's own son, Eli was the high priest, and his own sons were sleeping around with women and doing detestable things. They were religious. They ran the temple, but their hearts had no relationship with God. God allowed the enemy to defeat them, and they lost over 30,000 lives that day. They had faith. They carried around the Ark of the Covenant thinking, well, we're going to go into battle with this Ark because God's presence will go with us. But that's not how it works. God looks at our hearts. He looks at our hearts, and that day they lost 30,000 lives, and the enemy captured the Ark of the Covenant. They were putting their faith in their religion Um, in the Ark of the Covenant. But in truth, they had no relationship with him. They were sinning greatly, and God's presence left them. We have to be careful of that, too. Just because you hang around the church or you hang around Christians doesn't mean we're right with God. We each need to examine ourselves daily and repent of sin that the Holy Spirit shows us. I love how David put it. In Psalm 50, 
1.10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. If we want God's presence to be with us, we have to do our part. Don't drift away from him. He loves you. He died on the cross for you to save you from your sins and from hell. And we have a lot to be thankful for. Matthew 28, verse 20 says, Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So we need to know what he commands us. We need to live it. And we have to know he is with us to the end of the age. He will never leave you or forsake you. Zephaniah 317, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. His love quiets us. And that's why we need that shelter in stormy times. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. And, of course, that's when the Lord was speaking to Joshua when he was facing his enemies conquering uh, the promised land. And that's a word for us, too. He goes with us. Remember that. Isaiah 41, 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. And that's something we need to think about. So as we close today, I just want to pray for you. If you are facing sickness, we have many people facing sickness that we know. Um, and I know you're discouraged. I, I just went through it with my husband for two whole weeks. He couldn't talk. I mean, it was quiet. That's nice. But it was different, <laughs> you know. And maybe you're discouraged. I mean, I know he was discouraged when, when you don't feel well. And we have many who don't feel well. You get discouraged. But be like David and, and encourage yourself in the Lord. Pick up your spiritual safety kit, the Bible and um, encourage yourself. Make a choice to do that. So why don't we pray right now and, and um, lift up these. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would just um, touch and heal so many that are not feeling well right now, Lord God. We ask that you would encourage them in their time of sickness, Lord, that you would deliver them and help their faith be built up, Lord God. We also ask that you would touch those that are depressed, Lord. We ask that you, you would give them hope. Give them hope in their hearts to shift their focus off of their circumstances, off of the storm that they might be facing, Lord, and put it back upon you. Remind us, Lord, to think upon things that are true and noble and right and pure and lovely and admirable and excellent and praiseworthy, as it says in Philippians chapter 4, that we're to think on these things, Lord. Help us not dwell on things that the news presents to us and all the negativity around us. Help us, Lord God. Touch those that are depressed and um, need encouragement today, Lord. You have a plan for their lives, Lord. You, you're not done with your church yet. You're not done with your people, Lord. We pray for those facing um, any other storms in their life, whether it be financial needs, Lord, meet those needs. Um, during this pandemic, many people have lost work, Lord, so we pray for these needs to be met. Also, those that have broken relationships with uh, family members or have recently lost a loved one, Lord, we pray for your hand of comfort to be upon them. Lord, we know that storms come in many different forms, but you promise to be right here with us, Lord, through everything that we face. Remind us of your love and your comfort and draw us to you in difficult times. We ask that you would be our strength and our refuge, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we just want to thank you for joining us today, and um, next Sunday... Uh, we will once again have a video sermon, and Ralph War will be speaking. 
So we're looking forward to that. Our church will be open back up again for services on Sunday, February 7th. We will have Sunday school at 9 o'clock, and our services start at 10. So we thank you for joining us today, and God bless you.